my thoughts guided by the Holy Spirit? Yes. So, I just realized I rushed out of the house and I left my glasses. And my eyes are not as sharp as when I was here. But open your Bibles if you have them. I hope you do. Or your phone on your tablet. To a very well known passage of scripture. The gospel according to Luke. Chapter 21. And I begin to read at verse 25. That's Luke 21. Beginning to read at verse 25. And it's words of our Savior. And he's the best person to hear from at the beginning of a new year. So he says, Luke 21, 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations. Even if you can't identify with the first, the fact that we are alive on planet earth means that we know what distress of nation is all about. The crime rate continued to spiral out of control despite curfew, despite zozo or whatever they call it. The nations are in trouble. Right now many nervous people are in Europe and Washington because... President Putin of Russia <laughs> is flexing his muscles and because of the mentality that he has anything can happen War, it doesn't take anything for him his country was resoundedly beaten and broken up in 1989 to 1991 and he has not overcome that defeat yet. He wants revenge. Anything can happen. Anyway, the sea, sorry, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. But I would do you an injustice if I stop there. In verse 24, 27, Jesus says, And then shall they see the Son of Man, the person that we have been looking for, my grandmother, my great, great, great. The person that the pioneers of the Adventist movement have been waiting for, having left the world, given up their lives to teach the world about him. We shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory and my favorite in the old passage is verse 28 and when these things begin to come to pass then look up and lift up our heads why for redemption draweth nigh Anybody here knows what redemption is going to be like? I hope you know. If you don't understand what it's going to be, you might not be looking forward to it as you want to. But I'll tell you more in a little while. So, obviously, even if the baby was born last week, that baby might recognize that our world is in a dreadful state. Our world is in a mess. There is strife and bloodshed. There is war and there are rumors of war. There are famines. Every day you live, at least 40,000 persons die of starvation. Don't complain. Don't complain. 
disasters in Colorado sometimes yesterday into today this thing they blame on climate change sometimes it's fire the other day a tornado swept through a part of the state we can't keep up with the news about the tragedies fires floods tornadoes oh my lift up your heads jesus says yes the nations are in trouble but we must not concentrate on the troubles society is unsettled despite all the attempts and the programs of the politicians to improve society anybody here disbelieve the bible you could be a church member and you don't believe the bible don't take that i don't take that for granted but listen anybody living now and disbelieve the bible would be very very foolish let me tell you why i hear people all the time dismissing the bible uh, and I, I it seems you are streaming but i hope the persons to whom i refer will not hear in saint Anne's bay where i live you know there's a gentleman he goes up and down promoting black power movement and how he has a plan to improve society and that plan involves throwing out the government and the white people and becoming united and helpful and he, ever since i went there to live he has been trying to pull me into his program so i asked him do you believe in the bible he said no no rubbish 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 and so many other persons say the same thing let me ask you a question how would jesus and the bible writers two thousand years ago and more know that the state of society would be like what it is now how would they know listen what is happening in the world right now and in our church is a direct fulfillment of bible prophecy hello listen the world is sinking further and further each day despite all the best efforts of politicians scientists business people how would jesus and the apostles know how can you doubt the bible when the bible is being fulfilled all around us we would have to be crazy listen there are demonstrations there are strikes people are just worried and troubled even in rich countries you have been hearing what has been happening in the great america right in europe those countries that have been models of social success for many years people are disturbed and frustrated but as i said to you a while ago you and i who are students of bible prophecy should not be frightened about what is happening if we know jesus and we know his words daniel told us from 600 years before jesus that there would be a time of trouble such as never was and it seems to me we have entered upon that time the world was in a mess before covid came covid has just come maybe to put the finishing touches i don't know you see from covid came in i remember last year march when the thing really began to spread they told us that by summer last year no i'm wrong i'm still thinking i'm in 2021 <laughs> in, in 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 march 2020 they said by summer 
the heat would destroy and help to control the virus. Summer came, there was the first spike. They said, all right, the vaccines will come and things will be all right. Vaccines came toward the end of 2020. Second spike. We, have, we are now entering upon the fourth spike. And I, I don't know what to believe about vaccine. I'm not trying to influence you. But listen, the countries that are suffering most from the fourth spike are the countries in which they have vaccinated the major portion of their population. Right? And I heard the head of the World Health Organization today saying that in 2022, things are going to be all right. But a few months ago, another person said maybe for the next 10 years, everything that is done relative to COVID only makes the situation worse. It seems. One of the interesting things, you know, they have not yet told us how COVID got from animals to man. They have been investigating and they say the investigations are inconclusive. Something was existing for hundreds of years in bat, hundreds of years in bat, and all of a sudden it jumped across to human beings. And you, 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 you are hearing what is happening. Yes, church. The time of trouble is upon us. The apostle John, in vision, heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath. Having great what, brethren? Because he knows that he has a short time. Do you and I know that we have a short time? Ellen White says, fearful are the scenes which call forth the exclamation from the heavenly voice. The wrath of Satan increases as his time grows short and his work of deceit and destruction will reach its culmination in the time of trouble. You understand what is coming? <laughs> Jesus says in Matthew 24 evil men and seducers will wax worse not Jesus, Paul worse and worse deceiving and being deceived Jesus says in Matthew that what is happening now is only the beginning of sorrows you might have heard me say it already. When I was a little boy, my, the whole folk in my community would, when they want to describe something that was just beginning, they talk, would talk about young smoke. Anybody know that? When you just make up the fire and it's not blazing yet, it's the smoke. <laughs> right? Jesus says, what we are seeing now is only the beginning of sorrows. And then why it says again, the days in which we live are solemn and important. The spirit, I want you to listen to the follow, to this statement. The spirit of God is gradually but surely being withdrawn from the earth. That's why the crime, criminal monsters are roaming. Look what happened in the bank. <laughs> Downtown. Huh? And you are not far from where some of the actions used to be. <laughs> plagues, listen to this. Plagues and judgments are already falling upon the despisers of the grace of God. The calamities by land and sea, the unsettled state of society, 
the alarms of war are portentous. The forecast approaching events of the greatest magnitude. The agencies of evil are combining. And I hope God's people are combining. And they are consolidating, making themselves stronger. They are strengthening for the last great crisis, the final showdown. And in what it says, and pardon me, you know I believe in the spirit of prophecy. I hope you do. And you, 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 I hope you are reading the books. The time is at hand, she says, when there will be sorrow in the world that no human balm can heal. My wife is a counselor working over West Jamaica Convention. She goes to work. She, she can't find time to eat. People coming with all kinds of problems. Sorrow that no human balm can heal. The Spirit of God, sorry, disasters by sea and land follow one another in quick succession with great loss of life. Listen to the next statement. Have you heard about climate change? Listen to this statement. Ellen White talking about the disasters. She says, apparently, these calamities are capricious outbreaks of disorganized unregulated forces of nature, climate change, wholly beyond the control of men. But in them all, God's purpose may be read. They are among the agencies which he seeks to arouse men and women to a sense of their dangers. Hello. In another place, she says that they think, not using the expression, but they think is climate change. But that's not the real cause. The real cause is because this, the, 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 the four angels of revelation are loosening the winds. You know what they're going to do? Let me tell you, since I'm here, I don't know if I'll get a chance to tell you. They're pushing to legislate Sunday keeping for the planet to rest and control climate change they are going to do that and then when they do that the thing will just continue to get worse then they will blame sabbath keepers it is nearer than you think it doesn't matter what they do to this planet hello the disasters are going to continue to spiral out of hand because the reason is because men are drifting away from God and God is about to give up on this planet. Hello. It's not what the politicians are doing, why things are not worse now. It's just the angels of God holding the four winds. Don't make anybody fool you. At the same time, you know, I'm not suggesting that you must do things to destroy the planet. Right? We must do what we can. It is God's creation. But it doesn't matter what men do, it will not solve the problem. You heard what I just said, brethren? And don't make any politician fool you. <laughs> don't make any scientist fool you. It's going to get worse and worse. But, and somebody said it, the physical dangers that we face are not the worst dangers. Hello. Paul outlines the real problems in 2 Timothy chapter 3. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Perilous times have come. Why? For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, and the word covet just simply means running down material things. It doesn't mean being grudgeful of what anybody else has. You might not grudge anybody, but you are still covetous. If our primary concern is to run down material things. That's what Jesus calls covetousness. Right? Yes, covetous. Boasters. 
boasters, proud, blasphemers. God is being pushed more and more out of life. People are stupid. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart there is no God. And apparently the fools are in the majority in our world. Some of the worst fools are the educated ones. Because they are educating themselves away from God. So Paul says, without natural affection, truth makers, traitors, heady, high-minded. And then in verse 5, 2 Timothy 3 says, having a form of godliness. But denying the power. Make sure that that is not a description of your kind of Christianity. If all we do is come to church Sabbath, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and our lives are not transformed, we are just people who have a form of godliness. I have a sermon to preach someplace one day. I'm going to preach it early in the new year. Hello. The songwriter says, we speak of the realms of the blessed, that country so bright and so fair, and of all its glories confessed, but what must it be to be there? Ellen White says, nearly all who profess present truth are unprepared to understand the work of preparation for this time. She didn't say we don't understand, you know. That would be it bad enough. She says we are unprepared to understand. So even though God wants us to understand, God can't do certain things if our minds are not yearning after righteousness and the truth. Again, if materialism is our priority, God cannot help us until the attitude gets right. In verse 7, Paul says, and this is a terrible one, ever learning Never coming to the knowledge of the truth. The education system in our world today is a disaster. They are teaching the children, you choose your gender. Hello? You understand what is happening? Somebody gave me two sheets of paper. Almost a year now and I had them in my bag. And just two days ago I stumbled on them again and... Some of Nancy's stories they are telling the children about how life came. God help us. Rejection of God and his words. True faith is now threatened more than ever. There has been a power failure in Christianity even in the Adventist church. You heard what I just said? Listen, let me tell you something. I am absolutely sure that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy. I am sure of that. God has brought me to this. But things not right in our church. From the local church straight up to the general conference. And don't get me wrong, I'm not bashing the church. I'm telling you what, evil men and women in the church. Listen. The Bible, was it Jeremiah or Isaiah? The Lord said, there are wicked men among us. And Ellen White repeated the statement about the remnant church. There are evil men among us who want to pull the church in another direction to become like the world. Somebody told me something this week that made me nervous. I can't even tell you. Know Jesus for yourself. <laughs> by the way, by the way, some things are going to happen to this church that Ellen White says it will seem as about to fall. It will look like it's going to mash up, but she says it will not fall. But the sinners in Zion will be sifted out. Fasten your seatbelt, hold fast. So, <laughs> songwriter says we are living, we are dwelling in a grand and awful time. In an age and ages, telling to be living is sublime. So how do you respond? How, do we, how should we respond to what is happening in the world? Seventh-day Adventists should not go around complaining like everybody else. Hello, that is a denial of our Lord Jesus. You hear what I say, brethren? 
If we know Jesus and we know his word, we cannot go around. We will not go around complaining like everybody else. If we know Jesus and we know his words and we understand the prophecies, material things will not be our priority. If, you make, if we make material things our priority, we are going to find out what happened to Mrs. Lack will happen to us too. Mrs. Lack was not a bad woman. She just had her priorities wrong. She didn't know what was important. You and I must know what is important now. Right? I hope the church is listening to me, you know. Living and dwelling in a grand and awful time. So how do you respond? Jesus, after describing the mess that would take over, he says, and when these things begin to come to pass, we should look up and lift up our heads. What does that mean? First of all, we shouldn't be discouraged. Hello. What is happening? Anybody here doubt that the Seventh-day Adventist church is the church of God? If you doubt it, check. What is happening now confirms our faith. If you ever had any doubt about the truthfulness of the message you have to throw that through the window the prophecies that we have been preaching since 1840s are being fulfilled before our very eyes when ellen white wrote in the great controversy about the dominance of the papacy and america people laughed her to scorn even some adventists <laughs> there are people in our church right now who would tell you throw away the great controversy it was for when we were in our infancy. You better read that book along with your Bibles. Read last day events. And see if what she wrote over a hundred years ago is not what is taking place now. Lift up our heads. Don't concentrate on what is going on down here. You, you, listen, anywhere you turn, there's something to stress you and to frighten you. I heard a video of what happened in the bank. <laughs> uh, people screaming. And... Right? So, what is happening in the world now means that it is the worst of times, but for the people of God, it's the best of times. You hear what I just said? For the people of the world, it's the worst of times. But for the people of God, it is the best of times. Why do I say that? What is happening now tells us that God's word is true. Our faith is being vindicated. The Advent message is sure. Heaven is near. Any of you ever go to Kingston and get a visa to go to America yet? I've seen some people go there and they jump for joy as if they're gone to heaven. We have reasons to jump and shout. No. Heaven is near. Better days are coming. God is in control and deliverance is near. Church. Jesus says in John 16:33. These things have I spoken unto you that your joy, that you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. He's got the whole world in his hands. The precious Savior will send help just when we need it. I heard some testimonies a while ago. Praise God. The way to heaven is consecrated by his footprints. Every thorn that wounds, that wounds us, uh, wounds our feet has wounded his. Every cross that we are called upon to bear, he has borne before us. Listen now, listen now, church. The Lord permits conflicts, like what is going on now, to prepare the soul for peace. You heard what I just said? So when you are going through your trials, you must rejoice. That's why Paul says we glory in tribulation. 
tribulation work it faith and patience and hope. Hello. If you were not praying before, you know we must pray. And many times we pray and it seems as though the Lord is not answering us. But those times he's the nearest. Remember David, the psalmist in Psalm 73 said, he almost gave up. No, it's not time to give up, brethren. It's time to hold fast. If you plan to leave the church this year, you might as well stay. Don't, don't, don't even entertain the thought. Right? The reward is near. Paul says in Romans 13, our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Many of you are listening, some of you listening to me tonight were here in 1989, December, when I came here. Can I see the hands of those persons? Those who were here in 1989, December? All right. I have a few weaknesses. And the rest of you have come since that time. I know that some have come since and have gone back already. Paul says in Hebrews, and we're going to study this quarter, it is not time to draw back. The reward is near. Right? Ellen White says the time of trouble is a fearful ordeal for God's people. But it is the time for every believer to look up and by faith may see the bow of promise. Do you know what real faith is? We talk about faith all the time. Faith means we believe God. That's number one. We believe that he loves us. We believe that he has all the power to do what he wants to do. And we believe that he loves us too much to do anything hurtful unnecessarily. So if you believe that, whatever the Lord allows to happen, you are still going to hold on to him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you know the story. King, we're not going to discuss this matter with you. It is non-negotiable. Listen to what they say next. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver. But if you stop there, you don't have the real faith yet. He said, even if he does not deliver, we will not bow. That's real faith. Job said, he thought what was happening to him was God really punishing him. His wife said, curse God and die. I'm tired of seeing you suffering like this every day. Job said, you are speaking like one of the foolish women. No foolish person must be in the Seventh-day Adventist church. We came in as fools, but there is wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the what? Beginning of wisdom and a good understanding have all those who keep his commandment. It's not book education we're talking about. Some of the most troublesome persons in the world, some of the most foolish are the educated people. Listen, the worst criminals are not the fellows using the gun. It's the white-collar criminals who are staying in offices in, 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 in maybe in Kingston, in Washington, in London, in Paris, devising evil as to how to take charge of the world. Hello. Don't make anybody fool you. There's a text in Daniel that has been prominent in my mind since the COVID thing came. Daniel 12, think verses 9 and 10. The angel Gabriel was telling Daniel about the struggle for the dominance of the world in the time of the end. That means in the last days. You know what the angel said to Gabriel? I mean, Gabriel said to Daniel. Open your Bibles to the text. Somebody find it quickly. Daniel 12 verses 9 and 10. Read it for me quickly. Anybody? Daniel chapter 12. 
Nobody has found it yet. Read it, Brother Dockery. Yes. Right. That last verse there. The wicked will do wickedly. He's not talking about the gun crimes there. It's the evil ungodly people. I hope none of you is here. I hope no, there's no Freemason in the church. If you are, and I'm, not, I'm not saying that to disturb you. If you are, you need to repent. Because that's a demonic, devilish. I had a talk with a friend on Sunday. Right? The wicked will do wickedly. Do you know that the United States is run by Freemasons? I watched a documentary one night a few years ago, one Saturday night. I went home from church and I was relaxing. I don't watch movies. I don't have time for those. I have to educate myself spiritually and I flipped the channels and I found an American channel that gave a documentary on the Freemason if I never believed in God I probably would have taken my life it's chilling they run America by the way I'm mixing up everything in Revelation 13 the, um, the, John saw a second beast the beast had two horns like a lamb has two horns. We call it the lamb like beast, but it's not the best thing. Hello, all the founders of the American nation were Christian men in quotation mark, but they were all Freemasons, most of them. <laughs> Hello, you hear what I just said? When you go to Washington next, if you are brave enough to go, just walk and look on the street sites and in the street. The Freemason signs are everywhere. Hello. When, when, they, when I saw the documentary the night, I said, who, why is this, are these people so brave to put this out? But apparently they want it to come out. Because they want, it, want people to make it seem normal. Hello. You better understand what is happening in the world and... You have to understand what is happening in our church too. Hello? Ellen White says this church is going to be shaken and sifted. It will seem as about to fall, but it will not fall. Remember that. If you hear that the general conference president gone tomorrow, will fast to Jesus. A lot of people are not rooted and grounded will be shaken out i don't want them to be shaken out and the lord does not want them to be shaken out but if we don't trust and obey jesus says in matthew 7 there's, there's a storm coming hello ellen white says it will be relentless in its fury I, we had some in the philippines the other day relentless she says are we prepared to meet it so beloved in closing philippians 4 the apostle paul says listen carefully sound word rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice let your gentleness don't go about worrying yourself man take it easy and people will take note of you and wonder why you are so calm and peaceful in these troubled times then they ask you and you will tell them about Jesus. Christ is in the vessel. We smile at the storm. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about anything. But in everything. By prayer and supplication. With what? Paul says in another place. In all things give thanks. So you are diagnosed with some sickness tomorrow, give thanks. You're meeting an accident tomorrow, give thanks. 
as long as the Lord is in control of your life. Romans 8, 28, for we know that all things work together for what? And sometimes the good is not down here. God will allow anything to happen to you and me if it will help us to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. Because what if you get all the money and all the education down here and you lose heaven? Better you weren't born. God's ultimate aim is to prepare us to spend eternity with him in a brand new world. Paul says, and the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Paul says again, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Teaching us that denying ungodliness, you and I must learn to reject every form of ungodliness, even in the small things of life. We must be honest even in the little things of life. Sometimes we say, sure. I said, I was talking to a lady the other day about something. She said, Pastor, then you mean this a little, God will keep me out of him for this a little something? When Adam and Eve ate the food, it was a little something. But you see what has happened to the world. You saw what, you, you, we studied last week about what caused Moses to miss the earthly promised land. Hello? God says what he means, and he means what he says. If we are not faithful to him in little things, we will not be faithful in the big things. Live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present hope, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. How many iniquities, brethren? And purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous. What are you passionate about? I often tell myself, if we could put forth 10% of the effort we put into getting worldly things, into serving the Lord, we would be in the kingdom long time. We kill ourselves, man. So, some of us wake up early to go to work. Because you don't want to be fired and you don't want to lose a job, right? When Sabbath morning comes, you walk in church anytime. May the Lord help us. Virgin, let us open our eyes, please. Ellen White says, those who are watching for the Lord are purifying their souls by obedience to the truth. With vigilant watching, they combine earnest working. What kind of working, brethren? These are the faithful and wise servants who give to the Lord's household their meat in due season. They are the declaring the truth that is now applicable as Enoch, Noah, Abraham, and Moses each declared the truth for his time. So will Christ's servants now give the special warning for their generation. Our number one duty now is not to make money. Young people is not to get an education. It is to help Jesus spread the message. Hello? I was talking with somebody before I came here this evening. Somebody called me late. And, and I told him I was going to the Glendevan church. And he said he has heard about them. And I told him that when I came here and when I passed it here, you were probably the most mission-driven church in West Jamaica Conference, maybe in Jamaica. I hope you are still like that. Hello? One of, one of your persons from here who is a pastor in West Jamaica, sorry, not Jamaica, I can call his name Pastor Hilton. Every now and again, he reminds me of how on Sunday afternoon, Many persons gathered here and we scatter in the community to spread light. No more than ever we need to do that. The zeal must be more intense now. 
watching, working, and praying, filled with the blessed hope. Listen, because you and I are engaged in cannot lose. Politicians, people put a lot of money into politics, and one side is going to lose. The cause of Christ is destined to triumph. So we can invest everything into it. Read your Bible, sing and pray, live for Jesus every day. Live for Christ at work, at school, in your community. We preach by the way we live. Make sure you return to the Lord your tithes and offering. Because if we love the Lord and we want to see his work finished, we better use our time, our talent, everything we have to spread the message. I know why I'm saying these things. I'm the stewardship director of North Jamaica Conference. And I was the stewardship director at the union. And I know when the pressures of life come in on you, the devil said the money is not enough. So you can't return your tithes and offering. Hello. Jesus says no more than ever we should lay up treasures in heaven. If we're not laying up anything there, we don't have any place up there. Hello? The songwriter says, speaking to God's people at this time, tell it to every kindred and nation. Tell it far and near. Earth's darkest night will fade with the dawning. Jesus will soon appear. Nations again in strife and commotions, warning by the way, signs in the heavens, unerring humans, herald a glorious day. Hail him, the king of glory, once the lamb for sinners slain. Tell, tell, wondrous story. Jesus comes through. If that does not excite us, we are dead. Then the last verse says, Children of God, look up with rejoicing. Shout and sing his praise. We must be making some noise for Jesus in the place, man. You walk, drive around the place at night, you walk the loud, terrible music. I don't want us to go there and make senseless noise. But we must talk and sing for Jesus. The burdens of life come down and you raise a song, man. You are at work and somebody troubles you. Raise a tune. Blessed are they who, waiting and watching, look for the dawning rays. May that be your experience and my experience as we embark on 2022 so that at last we will be found ready, waiting, and watching. God bless you.